the average rate of change is to, to simplify it the average rate of change is a type of slope okay and so what you want to do is you want to find the slope of a line that connects between two endpoints that means that the formula for the average rate of change which some people tend to put a little triangle which means rate of change or the average of it okay is y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 which is the same formula that we use for slope so say for example i want to find the average rate of change between uh negative four and we'll do negative two okay so what you do is you find the ordered pair for each point Okay, so x equals negative 4 is this line here, and the ordered pair for that is negative 4, negative 4. And if I'm looking for negative 2, for example, x equals negative 2 is right here, and the ordered pair for that is negative 2, negative 4. Now, if you're given a graph, that's great. Graphs are wonderful. Because you could literally count your slope just like you do with with everything else. All right. So from the first point to the second point, I rise by zero and I run by two. So the slope here is actually going to be zero. I could show that to you by doing this this formula as well, if I know the formula of the graph. All right. So this graph was generated with this equation f of x equals negative 2 times x plus 3 minus 2 that was the formula so if i take these endpoints i call this one x1 and this one x2 sorry my pen sucks um i could plug in that x1 and x2 into the equation to get y1 and y2 so y1 for example would be negative 2 times the absolute value of negative 4 plus 3. I'll zoom in momentarily, see if that helps out with some of these issues. Uh, so I replaced x with negative 4 plus 3. Make that plus a little plusier. There we go. Minus 2. So our y1 then, negative uh, 4 plus 3 is negative 1. The absolute value of negative 1 is 1 and negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. And so my y1 is negative 4. And that's what we got when we looked at the graph, right? Right there, negative 4. If I do that same thing by plugging in negative 2 for x, you'll find that my y2 is also going to be negative 4. And then I could just use the slope formula. All right, so a y2 of negative 4 minus y1, which is negative 4, divided by x2 minus x1, so negative 2 minus negative 4. These double negatives cancel out, so I have negative 4 plus 4 divided by negative 2 plus 4. negative 4 plus 4 gives me 0 and negative 2 plus 4 gives me 2 and 0 divided by 2 is 0. So you could see that I could have just counted rise over run in order to get this but I could also I could just simply uh, use the slope formula if I know the equation here. Counting your boxes is a lot easier. And it doesn't matter if it goes over a weird little bend like this, because what we're doing is we're looking for uh, the, the ends of these intervals. So whatever happens between those intervals doesn't really matter, as long as you just consider just the ends there. So this one's a straight path. There it is.